Stephanie Bethany is a relatively popular autistic YouTuber, having over 12,000 subscribers on her main channel. She is also incredibly homophobic, detailing how she wants churches to lure in queer folk to then attempt to force them to change who they are, parroting a number of bigger to talking points, such as the incorrect assumption that gay couples cannot have children, as justification for said horrific actions, a fact I detailed in my response to some of her work, explaining with evidence why what she advocates is so horrific, including how it's queer youth that will suffer the most from what she propagates. Now I knew Stephanie had received some criticism on the matter before my response went out, having seen her video titled why I won't reject scripture for culture's morality, in which she pretends the problem people take with her bigotry is not the fact that what she advocates is on par with forcing autistic children to drink bleach, but solely her religious persuasion. Yet I hadn't had the time to check the rest of the discourse surrounding that, as I was just getting back into things myself when I made that video, so I decided to do a little search on Twitter before I published during which I came across a post by the official neuroclastic Twitter account telling Stephanie to preach as she bemoaned others for judging her on account of who she associated with, which is something that instantly raises a red flag for me. Who you choose to associate with does matter in that your association lends them and by extension their views some degree of support. And whilst you might argue that the benefits of said association outweigh or even negate the cost, the idea that your associations are free from consideration is a way many bigots and their supporters avoid accountability. Something that reflects on you and your priorities. It tells us that bigotry, no matter how vile, is not an inherent deal breaker. So whilst it's true that we can't dictate who you are friends with, we sure as hell will judge you based on it. I didn't know the context of this tweet at the time and whether it was in relation to Stephanie's homophobia, biphobia and transphobia, but it was too close for comfort. For those of you who don't know or don't remember, Neuroclastic was one of the groups I forwarded in my Autism Acceptance Month video, giving them my seal of approval, telling you, my audience, to go check them out and they were associating with a bigot who openly advocates for the torture of queer folk. So I sent them my video ahead of time, telling them that quote, Just so you're aware, Stephanie Bethany advocates luring LGBT plus people into church with false compassion to save them. I'd originally intended on doing a follow these autistic content creators section in my video, had to cancel it when I realised I wouldn't be able to do background checks on everyone after I stumbled across this." End quote. I was very open to them, simply not knowing about these facts, so I approached them in a measured and entirely calm fashion. Back in the public eye, meanwhile, I came across a post in which someone had noted Stephanie's openly homophobic and biphobic statements, to which Stephanie responded in an absolutely condescending fashion. So I saw a little red, gave her exactly what she asked for, and let slip the fact that the video was coming out in a few hours. Suffice to say, Stephanie blocked me, and I thought that was that. But I was wrong. An hour and a half later and the official neuroclastic Twitter account came out of nowhere because note, they were not on the public thread I'd responded to. Here's what they had to say, quote, It's fair to challenge the content of Stephanie Bethany's video. I agree that there's harmful things in there, but I do not agree with attacks on individuals because of their religion. Attack the religious oppression, not an autistic individual, because there are millions of religious people on YouTube and other social media with much larger platforms, and it's not a young autistic woman's place to be centred in an hour-long dossier against religious oppression. And her videos hurt me. Not only do they hold the view that people wired differently should never be able to experience their lives authentically or fully enjoy the light of love, but I used to use those talking points. I, a queer autistic, said those things. It took me a full decade and several suicide attempts to unlearn and separate from and be free of evangelicalism. I had severe CPTSD from it. 
I now admin a group for mental health for ex-evangelicals. Stephanie Bethany is one autistic person, a young person who does not deserve to be the center of any other autistic person's problems with religious indoctrination. The ex-evangelical groups are full of autistics, and I believe it's because we go hard. We don't invest in anything halfway. We don't break our promises. It's hard to reconcile what can't be reconciled. My best friend had this as an ultimate struggle he eventually lost. We have three queer ministers in neuroclastic to address this and other religious beliefs. We have articles addressing the systemic issues of which all of us are a victim. We put systemic oppression in the crosshairs, not individual autistics. I urge you to do the same. End quote. Allow me to note one thing here before I get to my public response. Myself and Stephanie Bethany are the same age. According to her channel's Facebook page, Stephanie was diagnosed with autism age 23. Meanwhile, her video coming out about her autism was posted 3rd of October 2018. So assuming she came out about this soon after being diagnosed, that would make her 23 at the time of that video. The same age as me. I was born on the 24th October 1994. Now in response I noticed several things, such as the fact that I made explicitly clear I was not targeting Stephanie on grounds of her religious beliefs, going so far as to supply a period example that showed how her beliefs are not inherent to scripture, but are rather informed by the current social perspective, emphasizing how neuroclastic's response seemed to be fighting a phantom video I had not published. I also laid out the core issue I take with Stephanie, how what she is doing threatens the lives of queer people, specifically queer youth, how attempts to convince a queer person to stop being who they are increases attempted suicide from a baseline of 8% to 23%, and how the conversion attempts she advocates for in her video actually increase that to a further 42%. I pointed out how the person behind the thread noted it hurt them as an adult before noting how not everyone on YouTube is an adult with a grounded support structure, as well as the facts that Stephanie was at one point a youth pastor and had access to other people's children at some point and could possibly do so again. That response is available on Twitter as well as in the transcript above the references, so you can go read it if you want but I don't want to drag this video out needlessly since there's so much more we have to cover. Following my public response, I also sent a direct message stating that quote, perhaps watching the video before commenting on that thread would have been wise. I specifically list alternative interpretations of the passage to show that the problem isn't inherent to the theology, rather it rests with the individual, end quote. At this point, I should likely note who is on the other end of this conversation, namely Neuroclastic founder and CEO, Tara Vance. And in response to my message above, she came out and told me that she hadn't seen my earlier messages, ensuring she had the video before publishing. Which only made what happened publicly all the worse. Why? Well, it's not as if she saw my message, checked my feed and then responded. She was patrolling Twitter to defend Stephanie. She came out of nowhere to try and shut down my criticism of a blatant homophobe, without even seeing what I took issue with and how. Had she watched my video or even a part of it, come to a bad conclusion and then done the same, that would have been one thing. We all have shitty takes. But to actively patrol Twitter and police newer autistic voices, seemingly as a means of protecting their golden girl, that's really fucked up. Now I won't show you what Vance said thereafter since she dragged it to a really personal level. Not in a hostile way, but in a way that was really irrelevant and was seemingly just meant to disarm me. Though I do give them permission to publish our full conversation if they take issue with the facts as I present them here. What Vance kept bringing up was the facts that she had experience of cults and understood my problems with religion, which again was not the focus of my response. Yes, 
there are inherent flaws with Christianity. The way the God of the New Testament matches the profile of a domestic abuser, that's inherent. The homophobia, not so. They also kept bringing up Stephanie's age, which is where I explained that they were the same age as me, as well as her autism. And yes, Levi, I'll get to the point you raise about that in a bit. Eventually, I seemed to convince them of how dangerous it was for them to use the official neuroclastic Twitter account to try and shield a blatant homophobe from criticism over their homophobic actions. Yet all they offered was to remove their tweets. I replied by stating that this was not good enough, that this issue does not magically vanish. I'd put my neck on the line in promoting them, and unless a proper resolution could be reached, I'd have to notify all of you watching about their interaction. Because it's not appropriate for them to use their weight as an autism self-advocacy group to effectively shut down criticism by one autistic person of another on a matter which carries with it real danger, especially to queer youth. So I asked whether they had a board I could raise the issue with. France responded that they'd escalated it to them, that the decision had been unanimous, and that they'd issue a response. I had to prod them a few times over the next few days as they didn't seem to be very proactive in communicating with me. On the 6th of May, four days after I'd asked them to escalate things to the board, they asked me my pronouns, and that was the last time I interacted with Vance. I added their communications officer on Twitter, who shortly sent me the following statement, quote, Hello, the Neuroclastic Board and Advisory Committee have reviewed your thread and private message interaction. We as an organization do not object to any of the points made in your video. Religiously motivated bigotry does kill, but also... We as an organization do not publish against individual autistics. However, we also do not restrict the personal ventures of autistic people and support their right to create whatever content they wish. The criticisms you have about the content of Stephanie Bethany's site are all valid, as has already been communicated to you. We as a group have agreed that your accusation that we endorse or go to bat for homophobia is not only untrue, but the opposite of what was communicated and of what our organization stands for. We would like to offer you the option to choose to withdraw the reposting of your video about Autism Speaks on our publication if you wish that we no longer share it. End quote. My short response? Fuck you. I have seen some pretty shitty responses in my time, but that was seriously messed up. And yes, it did enrage me when I received it. The derailment of the actual issue, omitting key facts in what happened, outright lying about, quote, what was communicated, end quote. I've gone ahead and posted a copy of my response in the transcript, detailing how this is completely unacceptable, so you can go read it there. I sent that response on the 6th of May and have received no further communication from anyone at Neuroclastic. I'm not going to read it out now, since I'll be covering all the points here, but do know you can go read it in the transcript if you want to. So, let's start with the disgusting reframing of what happened. Namely that quote, But also, we as an organization do not publish against individual autistics. However, we also do not restrict the personal ventures of autistic people and support their right to create whatever content they wish. End quote. Two problems here. The first half is irrelevant. The second half is a lie. Let's start with the first half. At no point in this conversation was having my video hosted on Neuroclastic ever broached. So why are they putting that forward as a rule relating to what happened here? I sent Neuroclastic my video because I saw the organization's official account cheerleading for a fucking bigoted piece of shit that advocates for the torture of queer folk, most of whom will be queer youth. A fact I wanted to bring to their attention, because when you start going around telling content creators that they're not accountable to anyone, if they grow big and decide to broadcast that bigotry to their wider audience, that can tear apart an entire community. 
We saw this last year in the action Stephen Woodford pulled in the secular community, how that turned the atheist community of Austin, one of the few non-LGBT plus specific secular spaces still welcoming to us, to turn into a transphobic cesspool. And it's those on the fringes who are hurt most when that happens. So I decided to equip you with the knowledge in hopes that it would impact how your organization promoted Stephanie's work and excused her behavior. We must also remember that according to Vance, she hadn't seen my video sent to Neuroclassics inbox prior to that little public display. Again, Neuroclastic was not tagged in nor mentioned at any point in that thread, so this has no relevance to the actual issue. Moving on from that, since I in no way called for my video to be hosted on Neuroclastic and yet was told by the official Neuroclastic Twitter account to not publish my video criticizing Stephanie Bethany's homophobia, that yes, Neuroclastic does seek to quote, restrict the personal ventures of autistic people, end quote. So when you declare otherwise, whilst pretending what happened lived up to those principles, you are lying to my face telling me I don't remember what really happened. Which is a bit of a problem for you considering I can go back and reread what actually occurred. The same is true of the statement that quote, we as a group have agreed that the accusation that we endorse or go to bat for homophobia is not only untrue, but the opposite of what was communicated and of what our organization stands for. End quote. Again, demonstrably false. You can claim to have failed to live up to it in this instance, and that you'll do better in future, but you can't pretend like the thing that happened here wasn't the direct opposite to what you say in your statement. So with that said, what about the other arguments supplied throughout this display? Well, as already noted, Stephanie is the same age as me, therefore attempting to shield her from criticism by me on account of her age, doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Nor does the whole, she is one person, not an organization, that Vance brought up. Because here's the thing, Neuroclastic is nothing but a bloated hypocrite in that regard. They said absolutely nothing when Stephanie set out to hurt queer folk. But the moment I responded, the moment I criticized Stephanie's harmful actions, they attempted to shut that down, lickety split. So it's wrong to publicly criticize individuals for spouting random homophobia, but it's good to publicly criticize queer folk for responding. Whatever happened to not publishing against autistic individuals? That you can lie about a video you've never seen, yet I not even comment on a form of homophobia I can demonstrate with causal evidence to be harmful. And here come the flashbacks to when Arn Ra defended Stephen Woodford's video, only to later admit he'd never watched it, but he still knew for a fact that it was in no way transphobic. Now the effect of this sort of behavior is it gives the impression, as mentioned earlier, of there being golden people, a privileged group of autistic content creators held beyond any form of criticism, no matter how harmful their actions. Which brings me round to the point Levi was immediate in pointing out when I showed him the response. That what Neuroclastic and Vance have said is incredibly ableist. The whole point of self-advocacy is to bring autistic voices to the table, to be taken seriously in conversation, to be heard and respected. So for Neuroclastic to suddenly flip the script and start asserting that Stephanie cannot be criticized because she's autistic by another autistic person is counter to that goal. It's telling everyone that no, autistic people are not ready to sit at the big table. That we all have to be handled with kitty gloves, spared criticism no matter how horrific what they are saying about queer people is, or how that intersects with autism. Because yes, autistic queer people are a thing. The person who sent me Stephanie's channel was queer and was genuinely shocked when I brought her homophobia to their attention. And the same is true of many of the people who commented to my video. At least when I bring it to light, 
I can do so in a manner that lets them know immediately that the bigoted crap she is saying, that it's wrong. It's better that they find out from me now than down the line when she's taken a load of their money and grown so big that she is not afraid of losing much of her audience. Bringing this back around to Levi's point, it is completely unbefitting of an autistic self-advocacy group to argue that one autistic person should not criticize another on the sole basis that they are autistic. Of course, all the usual caveats about undue hostility still apply. And on that, I invite you and anyone else to watch my response to Stephanie to tell me where I was unfairly hostile. Because even you admit here that there was absolutely nothing wrong with the video, in spite of what was stated plainly by the official neuroclastic account. Statements that have not been followed up, rectified and apologized for. Just offering to remove them, by the way, does not amount to that. If nothing else, I should have received an official public apology for libelous statements that the person who made them had no way of knowing or reason to think were true at the time, as per their own admission, along with acknowledgement that the actions carried out on the official neuroclastic Twitter account ran completely counter to what your organization asserts are its supposed principles. Instead, all I got was an attempt to reframe the issue as me asking to have my video hosted on Neuroclastic's website, which I never did. It's a bloody disgrace. So to Neuroclastic, I say this. You had more than two weeks to resolve the problem, and you chose to do nothing. I played nice. I tried to get somewhere with you. And just like every other time, I got thoroughly fucked around by you and your organization. Yet, no doubt, in spite of the fact that I try to be patient, people will still present this as me being part of the roving trans hate mobs. Do what you want with my other video, but don't you fucking dare call yourself a queer inclusive space. You lost that right the very moment you decided it better to shut up a queer voice than deal with the very vocal homophobe in the room. Now, if you appreciate what myself and Adita do here on the channel in fighting back against misinformation and bullshit like this, do know you can support us on Patreon. Your support gives us the funds to keep going and to keep putting out videos involving this level of research. You can also check out our other videos to see more of what we have to offer. So with that said, we'd just like to thank all our Patreon sponsors, giving a special thanks to the following people. Hannah Banghart, Matthew Kovac, Soraya and Katie, Garrett Van Voorst, Chelsea Williams, Doyle Jackson, Wellington Marcus, Sosh Daniels, Justin Allen, and Atlas Five. And for myself and Adita, take care now.